Hey everyone, Scoop Scientist here. Today what I'm going to be doing, I'm really excited about. Um, I'm going to be trying to make a uh, self-contained ecosystem. Um, if you missed it or something, but Cody, Cody's lab on his channel, he uploaded a video just recently about this. He put brine shrimp, which is commonly known as sea monkeys, in, in a glass box and he's sealed it off from the outside world and it is and the brown shrimp are now reproducing and living life as normal so that's what I'm going to be attempting today except for now well what I've done is I've actually ordered some brown shrimp online they should be coming in about uh, two or three weeks or actually one or two weeks by the time this video is up um, but what I am gonna do I'm gonna start by making a suitable um, environment for the brine shrimp but also kind of making a ecosystem before them so the ecosystem will the living thing will be this which is algae or algae however you want to say it I usually prefer algae I think um, but I have a little list here with everything you need for two liters of water I've got one liter of water in here that, so I'll just be halving everything here so if you want to have a look at that that's everything I'm putting in. Okay, so anyway, first thing I want to get started with is, well, straight up first, the salt. Um, it says six tablespoons of salt. Um, generally, like, um, brine shrimp, so yeah, I'm setting this up for brine shrimp, so brine shrimp can survive really well in high salt concentrations. Uh, that's where they normally are so what you normally find in like a natural lake with like whole high salt all, all you'll find is algae and brine shrimp but yeah so this says for two liters of water six tablespoons of salt you can really vary that I've actually got four tablespoons here just for one liter so also it's probably going to take a long time for all that to dissolve but I have put in Probably about two there for now. Actually, I'll put in a bit more. There we go. So I've got that much salt. I'll probably put in more later, but just for now. And then, so yeah, there's the salt. Now I've got magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt. Put in about one teaspoon of it, so just a tiny little bit. This just gives the life some magnesium. So there's just a little pinch of it. Yeah, because you need magnesium for some things, not sure. I'm not really a biology student, so I'm not exactly sure what is that's needed for, but that's that's what I have been told. And now, anyway, so Epsom salt was in, now teaspoon, two teaspoons of calcium carbonate. So let's get in roughly one teaspoon. There we go, that's calcium carbonate in, so. Um, but then we got water, teaspoon, just one teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate. Or like bicarb soda, which I've got here. So how much was that? A teaspoon of it. Okay, so let's just dump in about that much. Okay, so this is looking good, and now algae this yeah so the algae is what's going to be starting off my ecosystem but yeah later on the brine shrimp will be added but also yeah, this is the food source for the brine shrimp um, so I just want to get that in there whoa that is a lot I might need to take some of that out but basically so there's some good food for that and then oh one other thing I forgot to actually collect was grass. That's also a source of carbon. So I'm going to go grab some of that now. All right, so here's some grass. It's uh, not much, uh, but you don't actually need much. But anyway, let's put that in and hang on a second. Would you look at this? I, wow, so look at that. We've got heaps of little critters living in there from the algae that I collected huh I don't know 
what they are. That I don't know why I didn't expect that. Look at that. We've got heaps of little critters just swimming around. I'm not actually sure what they are. I reckon they're gonna die off. There's no chance that they are brine shrimp that I somehow accidentally collected already, but because this was actually from um, fresh water, and so that high concentration of salt is gonna kill them off. Could almost be some extra food for the brine shrimp when I when they arrive. So you know, I'm gonna keep those guys in there. So I mean. Sorry for killing them, I think. Sorry in advance, I should say. Okay, but now... Anyway, so you can still hear yeah, they're swimming around in there. But... I feel kind of bad. I didn't realise they were in the algae. But anyway, um, I'm going to... Now, What the last thing I need to add... The last ingredient is... Well, I've got... It's basically pot ash. It's actually it's it's table salt, but it's it's 50% less sodium, so it's got potassium chloride instead. I need and I need to add some potassium in here in the system, just just a little bit, and also that adds in some more uh, salt as well. But there we have it, that's about it. Okay, now I'm gonna go find something to stir this around with and dissolve some of that salt. So here we go, I found this metal thing, stir it around. I also wanna actually take out some of the algae, algae. I keep forgetting how I pronounce it. Anyway, so yeah, take out some of that and let's stir it. I feel bad for the, um, The guys who are in there. There we go. That should be enough mixing. Now I'm just gonna put the lid back on it. And now, because I still wanna add brine shrimp to it, I'm not gonna fully seal this off, but when the brine shrimp come, then that's when I'll fully seal it, so. And then it'll become like right now, it's technically its own self-contained ecosystem, but I, I don't know how well it can survive though. That's the only thing, because this isn't my first time trying this, hopefully it works. But you can see there's already heaps of little critters swimming around there, feeding off all the algae and whatnot in there. I'd actually be really surprised if these guys survive. Yeah, so I'm gonna let that settle out and see what that looks like. All right, so my brine shrimp have actually arrived early today. I bought two of these packets. Um, and I've got here, actually, I wanted to show you this. This, is, this wasn't part of the video before, but because the first time when I was making that one, I put in the moss and all these bugs started swimming. After 10 minutes, they actually died. Um, but what I, what I decided to do was set up this. This is a different jar, which I got the moss, and so when I put the moss in the water, this is just regular water, no salt or anything. Um, I, yeah, I put the moss in, all these bugs started swimming, so, and then I sealed this one off completely. So this is now a self-contained ecosystem. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of moss in there. I think I put in a bit too much, but not sure how well you can see it, but there are quite a few tiny little bugs swimming around in there and there's a few big ones and some snails and others like at least six or seven different species in there and they've been surviving well for just under a week now so they're going pretty good I think we'll see how they're going after a little bit of time but I'm now really excited to put my brine shrimp in this one so once I put the brine shrimp in there I'm gonna then seal it off completely with some epoxy and we'll see how long they last but let's first of all let's have a look how many there are here now brine shrimp are actually meant for fish food so what you do is you raise them and then you um, and then you like grow them a bit and then you feed them to your fish but I want to use them as actual like pets but let's see a look in there that is a lot I really only need 
Whoa, that's way too many. Yeah, I do not need much. Let's try and see if we can crush him, but about that, really. I'm just going to put in a bit more just for safety, and then we can. Up. Oh. Oops, I spilt them. But anyway, let's uh, get them in the water. And now, after like 24 hours, I should hopefully see them hatching and see really small brine shrimp swimming around. But I'll, see I'll seal it off later, after I see them hatch with epoxy so that'll be tomorrow sometime but that's it for now with that so that's really awesome that they came early and I've got quite a bit so I'm gonna have to like seal that off now and then store it somewhere, it says store below 5 degrees celsius so I have to store it in like a fridge somewhere but yeah that's awesome that they came so early So right now I'm actually up on top of my water tank, that's because it's a spot where the sun hits the most. Because brown shrimp actually hatch faster in um, hot in here, hot temperatures, about 28 degrees celsius. So that's why they're up here right now. Um, it's been... It's been about 18... 15 to 18 hours. I've had them in there. Haven't seen them hatch yet, um, so we'll have to see how that goes. So I've yeah, I just read recently that they need warmer temperatures, so I've brought them up here. Um, but I suppose that I'm actually going to end the video here now, and then maybe the next video, like next week or something, you see, like you can see these guys hatched. So anyway, if you did enjoy that video, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see future videos like this.